Hi everyone, this is a quick tutorial for Cloth Dynamics 2. Um, I want to show you how to create um, spots where um, cloth animation here, this character, and as you can see, um, the cloth is, um, is, is the deforming. So um, here we get the wrinkles and in this case we also here use a proxy mesh so we're using the original and uh, this character model um, but as a proxy mesh i will show you how i set it up in a moment but i think um, normally you don't really need um, extra um, class simulation for these types because normally it's fine when you just use skinning and you could, for example, you could export um, here. You you could export the mesh, or in this case, you can export here the the proxy mesh, and with the wrinkles, and then you can use the deformation as a normal map or so, and then blend between the normal maps. That would be, I think, good enough. And normally, you, yeah, it, it should be just fine with skinning. Um, maybe I will add some kind of uh, normal matte baker for this type of cloth, so you the 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 normal maps will blend depending how the body shape is. I think that would be a good idea, but this is an it, it's not complicated, but I think this um, is an extra task I can add to my to-do list. Yeah, so um, yeah, let's see how. Um, I set this up. Um, yeah, I think we can stop here. So first, um, I used um, Das Studio here with the um, Genesis 8.1. I just added the basic wear shorts and bra, as you can see here. Um, I think they are default assets. I'm not sure if I bought them, but um, yeah, they. I think they normally they come with the package, and um, and then um, I used um, export to Blender. So you select the whole character, export to Blender. There's also this bridge to Blender. You can also use this. There's to Blender, but I um, I used a, um, a different script. Um, that's um, this one here in Blender. Um, das Importer. Um, you can Google it, or I can I can also post the link in the description. Um, I think I don't have the latest version, but um, this already worked very good. So I imported this um, model here, and um, yeah, I can show you how I did it. So basically, you just um, you can use the easy import or the normal import. It's uh, in the easy import, there's some um, just a bit of merging of of the the assets and but and then basically um, you select the PNG or the DAF file doesn't matter and then it's it gets imported. And this is normally the some warning, and so, and then you already have it here, rigged. Um, you can also import me um, expression and other morphs. And um, one thing I normally do, I save the file, the Blender file, and then um, I um, save. When the Blender file is saved, you can select Save Local Textures. And it will generate a local folder in the um, in the in the folder you saved it. So I saved it here in um, here in um, in this uh, extra folder in Unity, and then it generated this texture folder here, and then there are all the all the textures you need or that the model has and um, yeah then I 
um, what I did I exported the the mesh as an FBX but before exporting I would recommend um, that you remove all this subsurface um, objects even from the body and create a new one and just um, make um, yeah I think this is just too high and normally I would just recommend to set it to one uh, for th for the body and the others you you just you just um, should delete so you don't get too too many um, yeah in Blender you can always uh, check here the the wireframe um, also for this one well in this case the wireframe is not accurate because it's um, subdivided here one step so you have to imagine one extra step um, but um, yeah that should be totally enough and for this mesh here we have the issue that the simulation won't work here with these areas where the um, vertices, uh, the triangles, the triangle edges, the edges are not very uniform, so they have different lengths. They some are very long and some are very short, and this is not very good for the simulation. So, in this case, as a quick fix, um, I just um, 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 du duplicated this object, and I, I called it. Um, I called it here some. Uh, can change the name to low, and then I um, used the de decimator, um, and I collapsed the. No, sorry, you can do it like this. Yeah, <laughs> you can collapse it, but um, this will reduce too much. Uh, no, no. Wh what I did um, is um, sorry. I I use the 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 merge ver vertex distance um, merge vertices by distance um, is basically um, it will merge these um, these areas. But you have to define a distance here, and in this case, something with 0.3, depending on your um, settings in Blender, your scaling. Um, this worked good, and as you can see now, um, I mean they are still not even, but at least they are more uniform than before. And this um, is better for the simulation when you have, I mean th the the distances here are still not so great, but um, it's it's already better than before. So I did the same with the um, the top, and then I just um, I just selected all of them, also the high res models, and then I exported this FBX, and I already have my preset here where I use the selected objects, um, then I. Um, write down the name and you I normally use apply transform bake animation and well I, I mean the most important thing is the selected object you can also here include um, the the textures here if you want and they are copied in in the FBX then you don't need the folder here but um, yeah, so I think the folders also is helpful, but you can also copy the textures in there. Um, yeah, I think that and I exported it, um, but I already did that. Um, and then I got this mesh here, and yeah, I set it to humanoid. Um, and also important always. Um, or still maybe one day I get rid of it but at the moment you still need a read write um, setting to on for the mesh objects um, this is mainly because I'm changing some bounding boxes of the meshes or something like this in the script and then 
even if you just change the bounding box then you have to edit this uh, t turn this on here the read and write toggle yeah okay but that's basically it um, just expected the materials if yeah that, that I also would recommend it and create a folder that that is called materials because I think unity likes that that you um, the naming it w it will later when you um, um, when 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 you re-import the mesh or something, then it's it will it I think it can find the materials folder better. And wh why do you do we want to export it? Because then you can um, edit the materials. Um, for example, I added the for the bra and the shorts. I added um, this material here and already set the cloth shader version to. You don't have to do this but it's better because then you can set the, the shading already for the... Um, it's, it's basically like in HDRP it's basically the um, same as the lit shader here uh, but... ah no I'm, I'm in... I'm built in, yeah sorry this is built in but still um, very similar settings here anyway so um, yeah that's it um, so what I did um, I first thing I um, I got the got the, um, the body here and I added the GPU skinning then I also added uh, add component added the mesh to SDF you can do this later by but I already did that because I know that I want to use SDF collision um, and when you add this uh, there will be all automatically uh, SDF texture generated and um, you don't have to set the texture um, you can leave it blank and, and it will be created at runtime um, yeah and you can also set the center in this case I used the hip of the um, of the character, so when it's moving around, it will follow the hip. And I used uh, I changed the um, the size or the the area of the of the um, of the SDF, so it's it covers only the cloth part because I don't need the head and the the feet, so only this part um, will be rendered. I will show you in a minute. Um, yeah, and for the shorts low, I added also GPU skinning, cloth GPU. Um, here I added the proxy mesh <coughs> and um, you have to set the weight curve. Just grab the one that's called curve proxy skin. Yeah, there's I think there's only one you will find that and um, the rest you can leave like it this and then it will generate a, a new prefab um, in the uh, in the resources folder here and um, you can drag and drop it in then here so it won't generate every time you just drag and drop the right um, one here and then you always have this uh, only if, if you change the the mesh you have to re um, generate it. but it will be a, if there's none then it will be generated automatically at um, when you hit play and um, that's for the proxy um, cloth skinning I also added um, I used a, a higher value than one only one is fine but when you set it higher then the skinning will be more um, intense uh, or the, the, the but it really depends how you paint the um, your your mesh. Um, we can have a look. So here's the the low res version, as I showed you. Um, can have a look again at the wireframe. As you can see how this looks. And um, yeah, I just um, you can open the vertex painter here, or you can also when you already generated one you can also open it here and then you can see here that I painted the top part 
<coughs> and I used to blur all vertices after painting it. Um, you can adjust uh, the radius with shift. You can also um, remove stuff with alt, pressing alt, and it's getting uh, this red. And when you have, when you don't see the the sphere, then you have to um, close it and open it again. I think there's some issue on Mac not using the. You can't use the shortcuts. I'm not sure why it's not working on Mac, but you can still edit the um, the values here, the radius, and also um, yeah, y you can blur it. You can also import a texture and copy the texture. Um, and you can also select uh, the channel you want to paint here. When you only only want to paint the red channel, it will only paint on this one. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Just painted it red here. And um, for the body, I painted um, also. I painted the area the area that should collide with the clothes. I painted that. Um, yeah, this part here. Um, um, yeah, I think in this case I would recommend um, to to hide the to hide these models, Oop. and then you you can can better paint uh, paint the uh, um, the body, and this is a volumetric painting, so um, you have to um, have to be aware that also the backside will be painted. If you don't want it, you have to set to front face only. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, you can leave it like this, and then um, when you hit play, then um, you can see um, collision is also um, working already. Um, when you hit play, then the low res uh, mesh will here will be not rendered when the proxy is active. Uh, where is it here? Proxy is active, then only the proxy will be rendered. So when I go to the proxy, and you can see. And what you can also see here is that I'm using the um, projection mask because this also helps for small glitches. And the projection mask um, in the in this latest version here, what I have, um, also works with the proxy. You have to, or you should check it um, by toggling this on debug renderer. And also, you need to set a layer here. I created a layer and called it cloth, and that's it. The rest are just left like it is. And then um, you can see here. There, uh, there's your, there's your cloth, and this is the, this is the the proxy. Yeah. And then, of course, um, you have to adjust stuff. For example, I think here is a bit too much jittering, so you can adjust um, the SDF. You can also test if the SDF is working, as you can see here. What's um, how it pushes the cloth out can change this a bit. Maybe this is a better value here. And um, yeah, this is also interesting here. The clamp velocity when you turn the simple damping on will also change the effect how how the um, cloth behaves. So um, yeah, I think that's uh, interesting. Also. Uh, this value sh keep the uh, keep it to 64, and when you increase these two here, you might get better quality, but it might jitter a bit more. Performance is not so good. At the moment I um, this running here uh, at three milliseconds something. Um, yeah. Uh, also, the of course maybe when I turn off the rendering, let's see. 
um, I might get better performance and okay also because of the um, it's already better but because of the um, recording it also um, the performance also suffers um, so on, on my PC it's actually it's quite good I think I without the um, recording I get over 300 FPS here uh, over 600 sorry um, I use the local space so when the character moves away as you can see here uh, because I turned on the the root motion so it will slowly moving so when I um, have let's, let's move it let's move it a bit so when I have the um, the mouse grabber on it doesn't work with the local so as you can see here because it's somewhere here it's still on the local position somewhere as you can see here this is still, I would not say it's a bug, but it's still something I like to change in the future. Um, at the moment, um, the cloth simulation for local space is still in the local original area. Um, yeah, the idea is to just um, offset the whole simulation here, but still keep it local, so it makes sense. Um, it's local because um, when you have a character with um, very fast or jumpy motions then local space just works much better um, yeah what we can do also we can have a look at the debug mesh points this might take a bit longer um, because we have a lot of debug points and I think it's also checking the other points of the mesh here and uh, as you can see um, the debug points are also in the original space here um, so this is basically the body part so if we move our character back here and you can see this is basically these are the collisions of the the points of the body you can change them if you for example move the normals here uh, or change the normal value then it see it can push it in and out um, you can also change this um, radius but then you have to restart the simulation um, another thing I'm using this manual setup so I can set up here everything I want um, by myself normally without the manual setup it will just try to find all the mesh colliders here and yeah um, so man I, I prefer the manual setup um, SDF uh, is now for one character here um, but uh, you can it will also affect other characters the SDF texture um, but you can have more than one so this is a list and you can have more SDF textures but they still will be um, affecting globally um, so uh, let's have a look at the SDF texture how does this look like here as you can see it's only the the area of um, which we selected here this one and um, yeah I think that's basically it this is a generated and when when we um, ah, sorry when we want to um, see how it, or what it does then <laughs> I still have to I still have to um, turn this on again so now I can show you the STF texture as you can see it's um, getting updated every frame that's the it's a real-time updating um, as you can see we're changing the 
offset um, shows you the also how how it looks. Yeah, so this this is basically it. Um, for you can also improve the SDF quality here in um, in this area here. You can increase the float fill iteration, but this will also cost performance. You can change this to ultra. Um, I wouldn't recommend jump. This linear is fine. And I'm also normally using explicit um, because this will be updated before the cloth simulation happens. So, yeah, I think that's it. Um, if you have further questions, let me know. But so far, I um, think we covered all the all the parts of this um, setup. Um, the proxy meshes, they don't need any extra GPU skinning or something. You just I'm just using the class shader here and um, it will be converted automatically to a mesh renderer um, when it's um, set as in here the proxy. Um, and the new version also fixed the welding. Um, I think that's it. Um, have a nice day and bye.